As of late, Southern Illinois has been hit hard with drug offenses and violent crimes. No place has felt that harder than Saline County. I sat down with Saline County State's Attorney Jason Clark to ask him about getting thrust into a position that he was not expecting to be thrust into in the middle of a crime wave that nobody could have foreseen. Well, I've, knew, I've known Mike, or I knew Mike for several years. I actually knew him for a few years before I came to work for him, and we were friends before I worked for him. And uh, when Mike had an opening in his office, he told me that he'd like me to come move home and uh, work in Saline County in the state's attorney's office. And, and our goal one day was for me to you know, take over for him and run, and obviously we didn't think it was going to happen the way it did, but, you know, thing, things happened, and uh, so I ended up kind of getting thrust into the position uh, suddenly, and, and at a time when uh, crime, we had a pretty serious crime wave happening, violent crimes, we had shootings and, and so forth, and so yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a experience. With the recent influx of crime in Harrisburg and Saline County, I wanted to ask Jason exactly what it was that he was planning on instituting as a plan to curtail the crime from coming into the area, and to talk to him a little bit about the amount of juveniles that are being tried in adult courts these days. This is what he had to say. Well, the first thing we tried to do early on was get, the, get people off the streets, get people arrested, uh, the people who, you know, were committing the violent crimes. And for some of the worst offenders, we tried to get the judge to have them held without bail. And that's uh, the very specific circumstances where you can do that, and we were able to get that done for a few of the most serious offenders. And uh, one of them, we've actually already had a jury trial. I, I handled it. I handled the jury trial, and he was convicted uh, in that trial. And now he's got other cases that are going to be coming up, and if we have to try those cases, we'll try them too. But you know, my, my first goal is to work with the police to get them off the street and then work with the judge <clears throat> to try to have them held in jail and that, well, they can't get out. But every case is a little different. Um, you know, this wasn't just one person or one group of people that were doing things uh, a few months ago. Uh, we've had, uh, even had some younger people who were involved in some of the situations and you have to treat those situations a little bit different than uh, a grown man who's you know, in his 30s or 40s, who's a known violent person and committing these crimes. And with, with young people, you know, sometimes you need to handle things a little differently, maybe give them an opportunity to, to turn their life around. And, and I, I try to do that when it's appropriate. Now, if you commit a violent crime, you know, I don't care how old you are, um, we're going to hold you accountable. And, and with some of the juveniles we've had that have committed violent, crime, violent crimes, we've brought them into adult court. It's something else that we've done. We're, we're still dealing with those cases now. Saline County has had a problem with drugs, in particular methamphetamines, for some time now. Saline County has cracked down and gotten rid of a lot of their drug traffic from the local sources, but as they have, they found that more and more sources are being brought in from out of state and out of the region. Jason sits down and tells us how this is leading to an influx of crime being brought into the county. I think. Uh the vast majority of the crime, and especially the violent crime, is connected with drugs, <clears throat> mostly methamphetamine and uh, things of that nature. And so when we see the drugs coming from out of town, you tend to see more criminals coming from out of town. You know, People still make methamphetamine here in Saline County, but there's a lot more of it than in the past that's coming in from the outside. And that brings in all sorts of people from other states and other counties that are doing other crimes in addition to selling drugs. So it really, I think the, the crime wave really rides along with what's happening with drugs. I really think they're connected a lot. With drugs being such a hot issue in Southern Illinois, and it has been for a while, I know that Saline County for a while had instituted, it had instituted a drug court scenario which focused more on rehabilitation and less on punishment. Uh, now, naturally, you have to punish repeat offenders, but people that are coming into the system for the first time, whereas back in the past, a lot of times, people would feel that they were once in the system, they were stuck and in the system as opposed to the way the drug court was doing to try to get people more rehabilitation, show them that we don't want to punish you for your problems unless they become bigger problems. We want to get you help to solve your problems. Mm -hmm. 
what's some of the things that you as state's attorney are going to institute through programs like that that might help kind of bring more healing to the the fact of addiction or mental health as opposed to just incarceration immediately on younger people that do have a chance for rehabilitation well it's it's a case by case thing obviously every you know everybody's a little bit different but um, the way that the laws in this state have been going the last several years and, and, and especially next year we're going to have a big change in our bail law uh, there's been bail reform and Illinois has one of the most uh, aggressive bail reform acts in the country that goes into effect in January and under that act uh, certain lower level felonies and misdemeanors basically a person's not going to be able to be in jail in a lot of those cases they're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to not even have a cash bail amount so we're going to have to be creative with those those and I'm talking low level drug offenders okay mm -hmm. it's, and that's where the law is going and I don't control that you know I'm, I'm going to have to deal with that right now uh, I've got somebody in jail, and uh, they have a bail amount, and it's a low-level drug offense, and there's somebody that really needs help as opposed to needing to go to prison necessarily. I, I have some leverage. You know, they're sitting in jail, and I can say, I'll let you out of jail if, if you'll go get help and, and go to rehab, and that's a tool that I'm going to lose in a lot of cases. But, I, but that's, that's what I try to do is I try to take people who maybe uh, aren't hardened criminals who commit their first drug crime, and even be a lower level felony. Uh, I try to give them an opportunity to go get help because even if I send them to prison for their first drug offense, which is unlikely, but even if I did, um, you're talking about offenses where they're, they're not going to be in prison very long because the Department of Corrections will parole them after they serve about half their sentence, and they're going to be right back here in, in, in Harrisburg or in El Dorado or Cary Mills, Glacier, wherever. They're going to be back in Saline County, and uh, they're still going to have a drug problem. So I try to, you know, no matter what happens at the end of the case, I always try to, uh, with somebody that's I think needs help and isn't, isn't, hasn't been a problem in the past, I try to get them help. And just this week, I've been working with the Egyptian Health Department and talking to them about getting some of their counselors in the courtroom with us uh, earlier on and on a regular basis so that instead of me just talking to the person tell them I want them to go get help I actually got somebody there I can say you can talk to you know this counselor who's here right now and we'll help, we'll help you you know get into whatever rehab you need and, and probably one of the biggest benefits to that is going to be help with people who are addicted to these opioid painkillers uh, pain pills uh, hydrocodone, oxycontin, fent and then fentanyl, and then that moves into heroin, you know, if, when it gets very severe. But um, that's one of the biggest obstacles we have in this county right now, dealing with that opioid problem. As previously stated, Saline County has had a problem with methamphetamines for years, but now with the opioid epidemic and the prescription medication epidemic that's been going on, along with the decriminalization of both medicinal and re recreational marijuana in small amounts in Illinois. I asked Jason what this was doing to the amount of crime in his region and what it did to his caseload at the courthouse. Well, they've already decriminalized uh, lower, smaller amounts of marijuana in Illinois. So it has reduced our caseload because we can, I can't charge anybody with a crime, you know, misdemeanor up to 10 grams of cannabis. So, I mean, I just can't file a case. Now, what effect that has on other crime, I have no idea. I'm, I'm not a social scientist, you know. I, I know that I see people that um, come to court that are charged with some other felony, uh, they've stolen something or they or they've possessed some other drug or whatever, and more often than not, those people are using marijuana too. Now, it, it's still not legal under federal law, so they're, so they're still breaking the law. And when they're on probation, they're still not supposed to be using marijuana. They're supposed to, you know, have no cannabis, not even supposed to be drinking alcohol, for that matter. So, even if we decriminalize it, it still uh, is going to be a factor for us in lots of our cases. I can't tell you what effect it'll have on society, and I don't know. It's not something I know much about. With violent crimes being on the rise, and particularly domestic battery, 
I wanted to find out from Jason what he was doing to try to curtail the problem of domestic violence in Saline County, especially when done in the presence of children. Well, uh, like I said, the, the crime wave that we saw recently here in Saline County, I think, was definitely uh, connected to the drug trade. Now, you're, at, you're, you're asking about domestic battery and, and, you know, how we combat that. What's challenging about domestic cases, domestic violence cases, one of the things is um, a lot of times there's no witnesses other than the perpetrator and the victim. And as I'm sure you know, uh, a lot of times the victim, for whatever reason, does not want to cooperate. You know, there, it's someone, it's their spouse or boyfriend or, or someone, and, and those can be really challenging cases when the victim doesn't want to help in the prosecution. Now, I can force the victim to come and testify. I can send that person a subpoena to make them come to court, and, and they have a concept of what's called victimless prosecution, I think is what it, it's known as. And there's things we can do, but boy, it makes it tough when you don't have a victim that wants to cooperate. So what we try to do is, uh, I, you know, I try to make victims of domestic violence, try to bring them in here, you know, especially as we're approaching trial, and make them understand that, you know, I'm taking this case seriously, and I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to, you know, do everything I can. I try to give them options, uh, some things they can do to, to where they can feel safer until we get to trial. We, we've got a really good... Uh, advocate here in Saline County for the Women's Center, which is uh, Diane Tablin. <clears throat> I've got her in my cell phone, and I can uh, I can give her number to victims, and, and she's really been helpful to us uh, over the last few years. Um, another thing about domestic violence, and this maybe goes into another topic, but children in homes that grow up seeing domestic violence, that's, I mean, it's obviously detrimental to them psychologically, but it can set them on the path to, you know, <clears throat> down the road that they, they can become criminals. You know, they, 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 they grow up thinking that's normal, you know, in their, in their lives. And a young man sees that, sees his mother, you know, abused by, her, by his father or his stepfather, and they become perpetrators themselves. And we got to do something about that. And, and we, have a, we have a special provision in the law for uh, an enhanced penalty for domestic violence committed in the presence of a child, but I wish it was more, uh, more severe enhancement than it is. It, it's, I wish, I wish it, there was more to it than that. Now, obviously, as a prosecutor, I can take it into consideration in what I'm willing to do as far as, you know, a plea or whatever in the case or the sentence I asked for, but that's, that's something that I really think needs to be addressed, probably by the legislature. And finally, I asked Jason Clark one final question. If he had one message, one forum, one chance to tell every voter of Saline County one thing, what would that one thing be? Here was his response. I think the message would be that we've got a lot of challenges in this county, and, and a lot of times you look around at the crime that's happening and the economy and everything, and it, it, it can be you can get discouraged, and especially young people can feel like there's no hope, you know, uh, growing up in Saline County. I grew up in El Dorado. I grew up in Saline County, and I remember it being better than it is now, but, you know, still not a lot of hope for a lot of kids, a lot of kids I grew up with. And I'd like to say that, you know, there is hope, and uh, I think if we all just uh, pull together and, you know, the good people that, you know, want to, you know, follow the law and, and help one another, if we work together, I think there is hope for kids even today. Jason, who was assistant state's attorney under Michael Henshaw, became full-time state's attorney when Michael Henshaw was found dead in his residence. Jason will be running for election of his first term in the local upcoming elections and is seeking for your vote and wants your help in helping clean up Saline County and Southern Illinois. For News Channel 15, with this perspective on crime in Southern Illinois, this has been Jeremy Smith. Have a great night.